At your service. Fallon, at your service. Good evening. Yes, yes, it is. Hmm. Feely. And Keely. At, at your, your service. Vortex! I've been to use it unless you've been too absorbed by the idea of what coven should you pick for what class or just watching tier lists of tier lists, you've probably heard that there are going to be craftable legendary items in Shadowlands. What does that mean? How do you get them? And most importantly, why do you want to cooperate with fellow friends and guildmates for maximum profit and efficiency is what I'll cover here today, so hear me out. In Shadowlands, a big part of your endgame character progression is going to be unlocking and crafting your legendary items. While you can only wear one at the same time, you might want to get more in order to allow yourself to swap between them or create different builds for different scenarios you might find yourself in, whether it's raids, dungeons or PvP. Oh and yeah, most importantly for some of you, legendary items use the more legendary transmog, meaning that you'll have to craft every single legendary gear slot if you were to unlock that complete armor transmog. So, uh, how does it work? In order to craft a legendary item, you'll need to unlock the rune carver by completing the Tolga's introduction experience, a max level questline which is somewhat of a tutorial to Shadowlands new endgame feature, which is Tolga's The Tower of the Damned. A legendary currency called Solash, which is obtained by doing Torghast. While we won't get into details of how Torghast works in this video, what you need to know is that you obtain Solash from the layers of Torghast you complete, capped at once per week per layer completed. This means that you are effectively capped in how much you can obtain and it's not something you want to miss out on a week to week basis, as contrary to other Shadowland systems, there are no currency catch ups, which means that if you miss a week, you're going to be one week behind others. You can expect about 1200 Solash per week, which is 50 away from a rank 1 legendary. Get the specific recipe of the power you are after. Said recipes are obtainable from a variety of specific sources. To help you find the information you need, open up your adventure guide and head for the powers. Then, you'll see the source of the recipe by hovering over the ones you want. As you may have noticed, there are two predefined gear slots for class-specific powers and three for powers available for all classes. This means that that specific legendary effect can only go into one of those predefined slots. It is worth mentioning that unlocking a recipe is account-bound and it's possible to get one for your alt while playing your main. I will also add that there are quite a few of them obtainable from the the Castle Nathia raid, and a lot of cool ones drop from the last boss. The difficulty of the raid you complete doesn't matter, as only one version of a recipe exists, which drops from all difficulties and you just need to obtain it once. A base white crafted item from one of the four professions being tailoring for cloth items and a cloak, leather working for both leather and mail items, blacksmithing for plate, and finally jewel crafting for rings and necklaces. There are four ranks of base items and they will serve as your so-called vessel, meaning that the item level of your crafted base item will define the item level of your legendary item. We'll get back to those ranks in a bit. Lastly, you'll need to define the secondary stats you want on your legendary item by applying missives, which are crafted items made by the inscription profession. To conclude, this is how it will look like once you've got everything. You get to your rune carver, which is located in Tolgas in the mall. You select your vessel item, then you proceed to select one of the legendary powers you have that is available for your base item slot. Assuming you have the required soul ash, you add your two inscription missives with the stats you want and voila, here's your legendary item. As mentioned before, there are four possible ranks of those base white items, and in order to gain those recipes, you'll need to first get the profession cap of 100 in one of the following Shadowlands professions tailoring, leatherworking, blacksmithing, or jewel crafting. Then you can learn all of the rank 1 recipes from your trainer. Each item has its own XP bar which you need to fill. Once you do that, it will unlock the next rank for that specific gear slot. This means you most likely want to focus on just a specific slot first. Currently, 75 experience is required to level up and gain access to the next rank, knowing that crafting a rank 1 gives 5 experience, while rank 2 gives 10 and rank 3 gives 15. Keep in mind that those values are subject to change just like every value you'll see in the video even though the current build is flagged for release. I'll make an update and a pinned comment if anything changes. Now that you know that there are 4 possible ranks of a crafted base item, what's important to know is that those ranks only increase the base stats of the item, which are the primary and secondary stats. This means that the legendary effect itself doesn't get better with higher ranks, so keep that in mind when deciding on your legendary investments. 
As long as you have a crafted legendary item that isn't rank 4, you will be able to upgrade it later on for an additional cost by just providing the higher item level base item as well as the necessary amount of soul ash. You should know that it will take you about 5 weeks to be able to get a single rank 4 legendary item due to being soul ash currency capped. Now having said that, what isn't obvious is that you are able to skip ranks when upgrading your legendary, going for example from rank 1 directly to 4. You can actually even craft a rank 4 right away as long as you get a base rank 4 white item, but no matter the outcome, the cost of 5150 total soul ash for a rank 4 legendary item will remain. But uh, Fintusius, uh, what's the point of waiting with the upgrading since I'm capped on ash currency? Good question. The whole point is that there is a catch in the form of an increased gold cost, or well, increased amount of mats if you prefer that logic. As you can see on screen, the way it works is that every time you'll upgrade your legendary, you're going to have to supply the base crafted item of the rank you'll want to upgrade to, alongside the additional soul ash currency. This means that the more you'll skip ranks while upgrading, the more gold you'll save, but that decision comes with the cost of having to wait another week or even weeks because of being capped with how much ash you can gain in a reset. Depending on what your priorities will be in regards to your legendary crafts, such as for example early mythic progression, your focus of where and how you'll want to spend your very limited amount of resources might vary. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. That Tempest Keep was merely a setback. But even if you were to have a lot of stockpile gold, the scarcity of resources in the first month of the expansion is going to be massive. Because with multiboxers no longer being here, which uh, did put a smile on my face, the demand for mats will heavily outweigh the supply available, as they were the driving force of an auction house always supplied with reagents for a good price, thanks to their farming efficiency, as normal humans couldn't compete with their farming speed. I expect those base crafted items to cost easily from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of gold or more, because let me tell you this, those base items are not exactly cheap or easy to get, and that's what we're going to explore now. Before I get into the overviews, let me just say that since those values have been fluctuating over the past 3 months, the amount of required mats for different gear slots differs from one another, such as bracers costing less than a chest piece for example. I'm saying that because I will only be explaining one piece of gear per profession, as every craft requires the same type of mats, with the only difference being the amount required. Also, every single legendary craft requires different quantities of orboreal shards. Those are simply items that you can buy from a vendor for 250 gold each, so remember that when doing your calculations. Let's start with the easiest and cheapest by far, which is tailoring. In order to create a rank 1 helm, you're going to need 56 shrouded cloths, and those can be easily dropped from any humanoids just like previous expansions. 31 enchanted lightless silk, which are created by enchanters. Creating those requires 2 lightless silks, which are a bit more rare cloth drops, and a soul dust, which is obtained from most disenchanted green items. Finally, you'll need 13 orboreal shards. As you can see, it's pretty cheap to get a rank 1 cloth legendary white item. Now in comparison, a rank 4 requires 219 shrouded cloths, 131 enchanted lightless silk, and 50 shards. Leather working is tricky in a way that it creates both leather and mail armor, but uses a mix of skinning mats which you can get from skinning all types of beasts, so let's have a look. A leather rank 1 helm will cost you heavy skinning time and sanity loss, but when it comes to the mats themselves, those are 50 desolate leathers. Those can be skinned from all types of beasts in the Shadowlands. 40 heavy desolate leathers. To create one, you'll need 10 desolate leathers, so prepare to farm. 18 heavy callous hides. To create one, you'll need 10 callous hides. 12 enchanted heavy callous hides, which just like for tailoring, are obtained through enchanters by giving them 2 heavy callous hides and 1 soul dust to obtain one. And lastly, 12 shards. As you may have noticed, this is already much more expensive than a tailoring one. In order for me to avoid repeating myself, the general idea is that the rank 4 version requires about 4.5 times more reagents. I'm not going to give you a price assumption on this one, but it's safe to say that it's going to be more expensive than the cloth item. As for a rank 1 male helm, you'll need 40 pallet bones, and those can be skinned from mostly feral types of beasts. 40 heavy desert leathers, 18 heavy callous hides, 12 enchanted heavy callous hides, and 12 shards. As usual, a rank 4 will cost you about 4 times as much and you can see the values on screen so I don't have to repeat myself. Now let's get to blacksmithing, and this one is even trickier. To craft a rank 1 helm, you'll need 19 Shadowgast ingots. In order to craft 2 ingots, as the recipe always yields 2, you'll need to mix 4 types of ores that you can only find in mining nodes across the 4 Shadowlands main zones. You can find Solinium and Bastion, Sinvir in Revendreth, Phaedrum in Ardenweald, and Oxine in Maldraxxus. You can also get two from a daily transmute from Alchemy, but since it's locked behind a cooldown, it probably won't be your main source of it. As you can see, it's not going to be easy to get these reagents at all. Then, you'll need 13 enchanted Elithium bars, which as usual is made by enchanters by providing them with a soul dust and two Elithium ores. You can find Elithium ores in all the Shadowland zones including the Maw, but they're even more rare than the ones mentioned previously. 
31 Luminous Flux, which you can buy for 5 gold apiece from a vendor, and finally 13 Shards. As usual, a rank 4 will cost you about 4 times as much. I can't even guess the price of a rank 4 item, as it all comes down to the rarity of this mining node, but you can probably expect it to cost at best similar to the leather working ones, but likely way more expensive as skinning is easily farmable while this mining isn't due to nodes being divided across all zones, and also because it will be used by jewel crafters, so let's jump straight to that. Jewel crafters can craft a ring or a next slot. Before I get into those, let me give you an overview first. Those two crafts will require reagents known as essences, which come in four different types. You can either obtain them at random from prospecting Laystrite Ore, which is the common quality ore type of the Shadowlands found everywhere, but the chance to get one essence is about 5% from my testing, or by prospecting the specific rare zone ore at about 50% chance, however you are guaranteed to obtain the essence you're after. To craft a rank 1 ring, you're going to need the same 20 ingots as blacksmithing, 10 essences of rebirth, 10 essences of torment, and 10 shards. For a rank 1 neck, the quantity is the same, but you'll be using the other two types of essences, which are Valor and Servitude. As usual, rank 4 equivalents cost about 4 times as much. It is very hard to guess an estimated value of those crafts, however, I would say it's safe to assume that jewel crafting is going to be ridiculously more expensive than the rest, given current values. It would technically make sense since rings and necks are the most versatile of gear slots, due to them being wearable by all classes and specs, but also because of the power of secondary stats for some specs on those slots. No matter the outcome, obtaining a rank 4 recipe of a given slot is going to be pretty costly, as it is extremely unlikely for one single person to get them all in the first couple of weeks of the expansion due to the amount of resources needed and their scarcity. Having said that, this is where the cooperation part comes in. Assuming that buying those items or raw materials will be very expensive early on, it's best for most to actually try and get them yourself without relying on the auction house. However, if you just do a minimal amount of planning, you can likely make a solid profit if you just cooperate with fellow friends or guildies, as getting at at least a single rank for recipe should be your goal by the 4th reset. Since those ranks are tied to a specific gear slot, the best way to go about it is to have each person pick an armor slot that will be leveled first to rank 4, and if I may suggest, you should have a look at the potential legendaries you might be after yourself, and then check out which type of gear slot can it be assigned to. I will put a link in the video description of all legendary powers available in the game, as well as the current strong choices for PV for all specs, so you can decide for yourself which one might be of interest to you. Moving on, I have created a Google form that you can freely use, take and share with your friends. You can then decide with them on what specific slot and armor type you will focus on. By doing so, you're creating a wide number of available crafters with higher specific ranks that should be of use for everybody, but at the same time being able to make goals for yourself as few people will have that same rank and armor slot as you will. I would say it's a win-win scenario because you're helping all of your friends while being able to earn gold from the market thanks to that unique recipe you'll have. And yeah, you could in theory funnel all of the mats to one character, but that would lead to him making gold to gold for himself and nobody would get any share, so it's not really a fun idea for most. However, please keep in mind that there is no reason to rush the higher ranks right away, as due to the Solash currency cap there's no use of having rank 3s or rank 4s in the first 2 weeks, as simply nobody will be able to use them so soon. You can see on screen the estimated time frame of how fast will you be able to craft your higher ranks of legendaries. Looking at these calculations, it would mean that rank 3s are going to be available both on the heroic and mythic week. This also shows us that rank 2 crafts appear to be barely worth it for anybody, as it's going to be gold wasted for most. My recommendation is that you should focus on crafting purely rank 1s and level your recipes through them, as they'll be in high demand. Then, you can swap to rank 3s which are surely going to be sought after by early mythic progression raiders. After a few weeks, I would expect that only rank 1s and rank 4s are going to be the ones that people will be looking for, as the rank 3s appear to be just a temporary need for those progression raiders, which is probably why you want to cover as many rank 4 recipes across different people or yourself by that point. I suspect that even if bots were to make a comeback, which is technically always possible, it shouldn't make a big difference in the first weeks of the expansion in terms of mats availability, since it took so long to fix the multi-boxing problem, if I were to take out my tinfoil hat, I would dare and say that Blizzard might have calculated and designed this craft in order to create an incentive for the people to buy tokens, as it should net them more revenue than they otherwise would from multi-boxers. But please, take what I said with a grain of salt, as it's obviously just a theory type of guess and can purely be a coincidence. This should cover everything you need to know about Shadowlands Legendaries. Now go and spread the words to your friends, gather your crafting groups or even alts, because even though enchanting or inscription creates legendary items, they're supplying materials for all crafts, so they'll be just as important and profitable as the rest. If you like what you saw, I'll be forever grateful if you consider doing the like, sub and bell thingy. For those that stayed till the end, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.